On today, my brothers and sisters, as we continue this awesome series called Unshakable Faith, we would like to ask that you will ponder this thought with us. To be or not to be, that is the question. To be or not to be, that is the question. My brothers and sisters, have you ever wondered why there are religious people who seem to be the worst for their religion? And others who are equally religious who are the better for theirs? Well, this afternoon, as we come to the conclusion of James chapter 1, we would like to impart to you five categories of people that we will find in every church on this earth. There are people who fall into every one of these categories that we will discuss, who believe that they are, watch this, profitable servants and their lives are reflective of their love for Jesus Christ. Yeah, however, however, I believe that the Bible teaches that only one out of these types of people are truly bringing glory to the name of Jesus. The fruit of their lives are the complement uh, to Christ and evident in their actions. Yeah, this, this type will accomplish great things for the master in the movement of the kingdom of God. This type, my brothers and sisters, will step out in faith and find God waiting, willing, and able to thrust them into their destiny. I would like, I would like to borrow William Shakespeare's soliloquy from Hamlet's play, to be or not to be. That is the question. Yeah, I want to pin this particular title to this text because these words prompt us to petition our faith, yeah, to see if we are living according to the will of God. Yeah, yeah, this, this, to be or not to be, it helps us to understand and ask these questions to ourselves. Am I going to live for Christ or not? Now, am I going to be a doer of his word and not just a hearer? That is the question. Yeah. James tells us in the text, be doers of the word and not just Merely hearers. Yeah. Did you know that God has called us, his children, to a higher call? God has called us out of the ordinary. Do I have a witness in here? Don't you know the Bible defines us as peculiar people? That means that we are distinct, different from everything and everyone in the world. So the Bible tells us that God calls us to a higher calling. Now I have to ask the question, why should he expect so much from us? <laughs> After all, he created us. He knows our flaws. He knows our faults and failures. Why does God expect so much from little old me? Yeah, he know I'm a sinner saved by grace. He know no good thing dwells in this flesh. He knows all about me. Watch this. He knows more about me than I know about myself. So I had to ask James, why does God expect so much? from us. God expects so much of us because, watch this, we belong to him. <laughs> he says that I made you 
in my image and likeness. So therefore, you have all the qualities that you need to represent me in the earth. Yeah, he says, you are my children and I created you. So he calls us, watch this, out of mediocrity and to walk in a faith that is unshakable so that we will display the character and tendency that God would have in the earth to bring that lost soul to God. Come in. He says, I have given you something that is so unique that is only available to my image. And this thing that I have equipped you with, the sole purpose of me giving it to you is so that you can look like me to bring those that don't know me to me. Oh, somebody thought you was here because you was that good, huh? Oh, 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 oh somebody thought that you woke up this morning because the alarm clock went off. Well, I'm gonna bust your bubble today. It was only the, the touch of God that allowed you to wake up and hear that alarm clock. So, you ought to just know that if it had not been for the Lord, who saw fit for us to see this day, that we will not be here. So you ought to just be thankful unto him for allowing us to just be in the midst of his presence on today. You ought to have these three folk in here that don't mind. Thank you, God, for just allowing us to be here on today. Yeah, he says that I created you to be like me. Watch the text. The text says in verse 18, in the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. So that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. Yeah, in other words, God has caused us to be reborn, to become children and he wants us to watch this to be imitators of Christ Jesus. We call ourselves Christians. So that means we ought to be like Christ. Yet yeah, as children, as children of God and believers in Christ Jesus, we ought to be constant reminders to the world that the King of glory is here. Yeah, everywhere we go, every person we encounter, they should be reminded that we represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want you to ask yourself, don't want your neighbor, I want you to ask yourself, am I representing the King? Did I represent the King yesterday? Did I represent the King on my job? Did I act out of character? As to who I say I am? Yeah, James is asking us to explore the qualities that we possess. And are you going to be a hearer of the word and not do? Or are you going to do what you hear? Come on, go with me to the text because I love this text. A couple of things, a couple of categories that we will discuss. Watch this. First, we see wishers in the text. And then we see talkers in this text. And then we take a glance at dreamers in the text. Yeah, and then we have those <laughs> I like to call dabblers in the text. And then we have those that are those doers that James talked about. So come on, go with me. Ask yourself, does my life bring glory to God? Yeah, I want everybody just to say amen right here. Because I may not get any more down the road and be in there. Yeah, yeah. To know God, watch this, is to love Christ. Yeah, yeah. To know God is to love Christ. And to love Christ is to live for Christ. Yeah, and, and, and Christ, if we love him and we know him and we live living for him, watch this, that will bring glory to God in the earth. 
Yeah, yeah. Just for a few moments as we look at these five categories, our prayer, my brothers and sisters, is that you and I will take a personal inventory of our lives. And when we do that, we want you to make sure that you are aware that God wants to elevate you to a point in a position that you represent him in the earth, that he will get the glory, somebody will be evangelized, that somebody will be edified, and that's Christ Jesus, and that you will have the now capabilities of evangelizing to the sinner. Yeah, yeah, watch this, watch this. The first thing we see in the text are those wishes. Now, wish your sigh and cry, but never try. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they sigh and they cry, but they don't do nothing. I told you I want my amen up front so I know I'm get to me up and through here. So they know they're, there's more to the Christian life than they are experiencing, but watch this, they will not do anything to change. Yeah, they, they, they just say, or they wish things would change without trying or making any effort to change them. Yeah, they, they wish they had a better prayer life, but won't spend no time in that prayer closet. Yeah, they, they, they wish that they had a better devotional time with God, but never pick up their Bible except on Sunday, and sometimes they leave it at home. Amen, Walt. Yeah, yeah. They, they, those wishers, my brothers and sisters, they wish the church would do more, but watch this. They don't put forth an effort to do anything in ministry. We're talking about those wishes. Yeah, they wish that things would be better in their own lives. They wish that they could get that promotion on the job. They wish that the bank accounts would start stacking up, but they don't want to do anything to bring those wishes to fruition. Now, I had to look at the text and engage in this text. I had to understand why James tells us to be doers and not just hearers. Yet, yeah, it has been said that the height of insanity, watch this, is to continue to do something the same way, day after day, and expect a different result. The fact is that wishes never accomplish anything for God, and they, they, they spend time in their whole lives wondering why nothing has changed for me. Yeah, they, 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 they say, I, I, I should have, could have, would but I couldn't. I wish things would get better, but I just don't know why. Well. I would like to ask that wisher, uh, what have you done for Christ lately? Yeah, have you done anything to catapult yourself into your destiny, or are we just going to wish God would make us move into our destiny? Watch this. We serve a God that will give us the promised land, but he will tell us you have to go get it. Come here, children of Israel. I've told you I've given you a land filled with milk and honey, not even made with your own hands. Everything you need is in that land. Now what you have to do is move and go get it. Y'all know the story. I know I got some smart folk in here. You know the story. Before they made it to the promised land, the people got upset with Moses and said, look, we want to make sure God is watch this, telling us the truth. So why don't you send some folk over there to check the land out for us before we go over there and make a fool of ourselves? Moses said, didn't he tell us that he's giving us the land? Yeah, but I know what he told you because remember, they picked Moses to be the spokesman for the children of Israel. Yeah, we know what he told you, Moses, but I would like for you to just humor us and send some spies over there to check it out. You know the story. They sent 12 tribes. 12 came back. Only two said, hey, we are able to get that. Everything over there is just like God said. 10 of them came back and said, no. Yeah, the pomegranates, the grapes, and all that stuff looks good, but uh, Moses, 
They don't modernize it for you. Moses, there's some giants over there. And those folk bigger than us. How are we going to get them out of the land you say God gave us? But I was too. <laughs> Watch this, somebody. It doesn't take many to do what God has called us to do. There was only two spies that came back and said, we're well able to take it. So I'm ready to go get my promised land. And you know the story. I want you to read it when you get home. If you don't, those that said no, they died in the wilderness. Let me set somebody free right now. Listen, you're wondering in the wilderness. Don't die there because God has promised you that there's better in the land. Get out of your wishing mentality. Watch this. Come on, let me cut across the field. Have you found yourself wishing that things were better in your life? Have you found yourself wishing things could come to pass but never seem to make it get where the things are? Watch, I could do better. And then the next statement out your mouth is this. Oh, man. That's the wisher mentality. Just wishing my brothers and sisters won't make it happen. No, no, it takes action, yeah, and hard work to make those things happen. Most people will only wish and never act because, watch this, fear of failure. They don't move because they fear that they will fail in what they are doing. Well, what, what they don't realize is this, is that inactivity, my brothers and sisters, automatically fails you. Let me put a twist on it for you. If you have a wish and never do anything about the wish, you're just wishing. Somebody said you ought to just think about it and then put those thoughts into action. And when you move on those wishes, watch this, something will happen because God will take that faithfulness of you trusting him and watch this, supernatural powers are now at your disposal. Yeah, yeah. See, somebody understand that if you fail to do something, you're going to stay in the same place you are. Well, we used to say this in the military. When we used to go to the range, we had target practice. He said, if you aim at nothing, you're going to hit exactly what you aim for. So you want to aim at the target in which is in front of you so that you fulfill exactly what you came out here to do. I just want you to tell your neighbor, go ahead and move, go ahead and move. Oh, you scared of that one, you scared of that one. Tell others, make a move now, it's time for you to make a move. Don't just wish, don't just wish, now it's time for you to move. God has already told you where to go, now it's time to go. Not only that, watch this, watch this, you have those wishes, but then you have those talkers, watch the talk. Talkers are everywhere. Lord have mercy. Can you, you can walk in any church, any time, and you can spot that talker very quickly. Yeah, yeah, watch this. Because that talker more than likely will find you because they need somebody to talk to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talkers are all telling about the things that they do, but the things they talk about is only in their minds. Yeah, yeah, they think they, they, the talkers, they always talking about what they would like to do and what they have done or what they're going to do. But watch this, the key to that is they're always going to do something. But they never seem to get to do it. Do I have any help in here? Y'all know those talkers. They, they will get people stirred up and excited. 
about something and then just leave them hanging. Lord, I'm just talking you to end up running from church to church because after a while, people get to know who the talkers are and watch this. They quit listening to the talkers because they claim the fame is now null and void. Let me use the young folk for now. I don't know if they still use, use it, but they used to say, don't just talk about it, be about it. Yeah, it, it's not enough just to talk about what you're going to do. Put some action to that talk. If you say you're a child of God, act like you know God. Yeah, yeah, we have those that wish, and we have those that talk. Watch this, we have that third category, we have those dreamers. Yeah, now, I have always believed that it's a good thing to be a dreamer. Joseph was a dreamer. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with being a dreamer, but there's more to being a dreamer than just having a dream or a vision for doing the work of the Lord. Yeah, a dreamer must take it a step further and put some action into being that one that catapults that dream into reality. Yeah, the problem I see that a lot of dreamers plan and prepare, but watch this, come here, but they never dare. They plan, they prepare, but they never dare. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor? Dreamers usually, they usually start out with good intentions, but a short circuit develops between the dream and the action. Something disconnects between your thoughts and your action. So it's all right to dream, but it's not enough. You have to bring that dream yeah, listen, God has given the vision for this body of believers. Everything from the plan to grow, setting up the government of the church, the operational infrastructure of this ministry, and he's giving us the blueprint on meeting the existential needs and the spiritual needs of those he has called us to minister to. But watch this, come here, don't miss this. It's not enough just to have a vision. We need some folk that's going to move in that vision. God says, I've given you the power now, and I'll work it. I've never found anywhere in the Word of God, if you do come holler at your boy, but I've never found anywhere in the Bible where God has made a covenant with a group of people, and he never employed them to do anything. God said, I want to agree with you. But there's something that you have to do. I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory, but you have to have faith that's unshakable to move when you don't know where you're going. Yeah, so those dreamers, listen, dreamers, they have the power to plan, to organize, but they need those that are willing to follow the dream. Yeah, yeah, watch this. I thank God for the vision, but nothing happens with the dream or the vision unless we take action. Somebody say, it's time to take action. To take action. Yeah, yeah, watch this. I've learned something, my brothers and sisters, on our journey. Here at New Vision Christian Church, I've learned that God won't bless laziness or obedience. No, 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 God won't bless that. God only blesses obedience and faithfulness. Listen, God is telling us, I need some go-getters. I need those that are willing to get into the trenches, to go to the highways and byways and compel them to come to know my son Jesus. It's time now, my brothers and sisters, for having that timid mentality of that closet Christian. God isn't calling us to be quiet in the day in which we are living in. We are living in a day where every other group is not ashamed of what they believe. Everybody is coming out the closet. And it seems like the Christians are going in. It's something wrong with that picture when you have a whole group of folk that say they believe in Jesus, but every time something goes up against the Word of God, the people of God are nowhere to be found. It's time out for this dream. Let's put those dreams. Don't you know I'm 
maybe it's just me, but see, I just believe the word of God. He has already given us authority in the earth. So why are we asking for something that is already a God-given right for us? You don't feel me, you don't feel me. Why is it that the Christians are walking around, let me let you go on, are walking around like we have our heads stuck in the sand? Just turn your TV on, open up a newspaper. You will come to find out that other folks have dreams that goes against the word of God and they don't have a problem moving in that dream. But God, watch this, is telling us we have to be dreamers and put that dream into action. And so we have those wishes, we have those that talk about it, we have those that dream. God will bless the faithfulness of that dream, but he wants somebody to move in that vision. And then we have those dabbers. Somebody say dabbers. Now, now the dabbers, the dabbers, the church has always been plagued with those that just dabble. Yeah, they dabble in this, they they, they dabble in that. Yeah, they dabble like they, they, they like to start projects and they just don't finish them. Yeah, they they dabble in ministry and dabble in serving God, but they just don't stick to it, man. So you you know you you know some dabblers. Everybody has encountered some dabblers. Now if you haven't encountered any dabblers, maybe it's you. The dabblers, they're the ones, they, they dabble in ministry because it seems exciting, but when push comes to shove, watch this, they back out and disappear from the scene. Now, they decided it wasn't worth their time and effort to continue on. Now, they are the people who want to dabble in things, but watch this, they don't want to follow leadership. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't want to be held accountable. No, no. Yeah, yeah, they, they quickly lose interest because it's hard for them to engage in service, not says not to the church, but to the Lord. New vision. You are not Pastor Mon She. You belong to God. I am your under shepherd. I am the one that God has given the vision to, to lead this body of Christ. But you don't belong to me. We all belong to the Father. But I have a privilege, and I, and I do count it a privilege, to be your under shepherd because I love educating those in the body of Christ, discipling those to be those that follow the vision and mandate of the master. That's a privilege to me. And I don't take that privilege lightly. So when I see a dabbler come across my way, it's my duty as your pastor to tell you, listen, you, you, you need to tighten up your shop group. You're all over the place. You need to come on and get vision focused and mission minded because you can't just dabble. Watch the text. I'm not making it up. Watch the text. The text says in verse 22, but prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers only. Hearers who delude themselves. That means that you hear the word of God, but you don't act on the word of God. So therefore, you, you have deceived yourself to think that you are all right in the state that you are in. I wish I had about two folk in here that understood that it's not time for us to play dabblers. We're living in a world where people are dying, going to hell every day because we have 
did not die in vain. I want you to know, to be or not to be, that's the question I want every one of us to ask ourselves. Are we going to do what God has called us to do? Or are we going to sit by and watch his image and likeness die without knowing who he is? 